Who are we as humans, as individuals? What makes us who we are? Is it our nature or our decisions? And who makes those decisions? Is it us, our code, our experiences, our surroundings? Those are all weighty questions that have been popping up for thousands of years and also for three Westworld seasons. And Westworld Season 3, Episode 6, gave us different answers to those questions than in previous episodes and seasons. So let's explore that. Hi everybody, Gil here. Welcome to another Westworld review. There are only two more episodes to go this season. It has been a bit up and down, but mostly up in my eyes. And I have a feeling that it will close out nicely and leave a good taste in our mouths for Season 4. As usual, hit the sub button if you haven't. And I also wanted to let you know that after this Westworld season is over, I'm going to bring back the re-reading a Game of Thrones videos from back in the day. Each video breaking down a chapter. Those were loads of fun, so if you like those and don't want to miss out on them, hit the bell below. So where were we? Ah, uh, ah, uh, we were talking about ourselves, our favorite topic we are infatuated with humanity and what it means to be human we can't get enough of ourselves writers william faulkner's quote about writing popularized by george r, r. martin says it all the only thing worth writing about is the human heart in conflict with itself conflict that's the basic ingredient in every story and as for the human heart that was what westworld season 3 episode 6 was all about. In Westworld, human nature is explored through humans and the humanoid clones that they have created. Robots. Our obsession with ourselves is not just apparent in the stories we write, but also in the resources we pour into science. We not only search our bodies to treat them better, that obviously makes sense, we also research our own behaviors and instincts and likes and dislikes to better understand ourselves. We find us so interesting. Do you want to share more of your thoughts with us? And we know we can't just ask humans what makes you who you are and just take their answers <laughs> as gospel. And we sit here on a neat little pile of ashes having squeezed anything of value out of this planet and we ask ourselves why are we here? To service the chaos. We're maggots eating a corpse. A virus. Human beings are a disease, a cancer of this planet. You are a plague. After spending 200,000 years on this planet, we can fly into space and create robots that are so like us that you can't even tell. But the biggest mystery we haven't cracked is our own age. The whole premise of Westworld is that a corporation creating an entire elaborate theme park just in an effort to understand humans which is not dissimilar to what AIs in the real world like Google and Facebook have created to better understand and predict and thus manipulate human behavior. And this season we learn that there is an even bigger project out there set to understand, predict and manipulate humanity. Rehoboam, combining both the macro and the micro levels, analyzing our data to try and predict what we're going to do as individuals and as groups. And I felt that this episode stood out by being more, well, human, for lack of a better word. It's not an accident that there's actual therapy, psychological therapy, old school therapy in this episode. Not a one-on-one -on -one session Bring yourself back online. meant to manipulate or extract information. No, just make other people feel better about who they are and their lives. This episode was much more grounded than previous episodes this season. Focusing on our emotions, fears, traumas, hang-ups. Why are we the way we are? And who do we want to be? For example, Charlotte Hale. Not the human version, but the Dolores inside Charlotte version. Which is neither Dolores nor Charlotte, and yet is both Dolores and Charlotte. We know our nature is flawed, so we try to treat our mental and emotional wounds to heal and hopefully live better lives. So this Charlotte-Dolores throughout the episode is guided by her emotions. How the fuck did we have to keep these emotions? She has a mission, but her life circumstances as Charlotte 
have made her care for Charlotte's estranged husband and son more than the original Charlotte truly cared about when she was around. Dolores is slowly embodying the body she is living in. I'm already changed. I can feel myself slipping away from you. Now that she's walking in her boots or heels, she experiences the world through Charlotte because when people interact with her, for better or worse, they interact with her as Charlotte. And that is slowly making Dolores more Charlotte. Let's continue with fears. She's frightened to lose her family. They're not your family. The real Charlotte is dead, but when she sees her son looking at her, you don't have to worry. Her estranged husband looking at her, she's slowly becoming what they are seeing. It doesn't have to make sense rationally. It makes sense emotionally. On to traumas. There are two major traumas in the episode that would shape the two characters who were hit by them. Maeve lost Hector and Charlotte lost her family. They both have a Terminator look after that. And Charlotte was walking around very Terminator-like for the better part of the episode. The actress did an, did an awesome job, by the way. I love it. I love it. Maeve, as we have already seen from her obsession with her so-called daughter, she believes the illusion of her existence. And she thinks that restoring this robot means uploading him onto the character of Hector. Even though robots rotate among roles, and even though him as Hector is no more real than him as any other character he played, or is there actually something real and tangible that unites all those characters in the same way that Dolores is now slowly adopting Charlotte's nature? Serac says that he uncovered Charlotte was actually Dolores because he saw that she cared about her family more than Charlotte did. Well, apparently Rehoboam, with all his infinite wisdom, did not foresee that the actual human Charlotte, while sensing her life was at an end, found out that she in fact did care about her family more than she showed. So is Dolores hyphen Charlotte here a fake Charlotte? Is she more Charlotte than the real life Charlotte ever was because she didn't realize how much she cared about her family until it was too late to act on it? Hmm? Because had the human Charlotte survived the park, she would have come back different and treated her family better. Let's move on to hangups. William can't stop trying to make up his mind whether he has free will or not whether he's in control or in the back seat, if he is who he is because something happened to him along the way or because he was always like that and certain circumstances reveal this true nature. Come on, William, no sense in denying your dark urges. Now who's to say those were even my urges? I was never like that as a child. I drink because of you. So I never had a choice. This was how it was always gonna turn out. At the end, he realizes that while it might be an interesting philosophical discussion, it's a useless endeavor for actual life on this actual planet. If you can't tell, does it matter? It reminded me of a scene in another HBO show that was and still is one of my all-time fabs, Six Feet Under. There is no point. That's the point, <sighs> isn't it? Don't give me this phony existential bullshit. I expect better from you. On the left here is David, who cannot shake loose a very traumatic experience. You can do anything, you lucky bastard, you're alive! He's having an imaginary conversation with his dead dad. What's a little pain compared to that? This conversation honestly, actually tangibly affected the way that I experienced life. You hang on to your pain like it means something, like it's worth something. Well, let me tell you, it's not worth shit. Let it go. It can't be so simple. What if it is? In William's epiphany, as to what is important reminded me of this great scene. The best that we can do is try our best to live our lives to the best of our abilities. So why is William like this? He just killed his demons, literally. Killed his past, killed the boy. And the best he can do now is find a purpose and stop treating life like a philosophy course. Is Maeve being good? Is Dolores being bad? Is Dolores hyphen Charlotte a fake? Who knows? Who cares? There are no answers to any of these questions. Let's just make the most of the time that we have. 
Okay, let's wrap it all up for now. What did you take away from this episode? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and thank you patrons for supporting my channel. Take care and I'll see you after next week's episode. Bye bye.